Hello everyone, I'm uh, Hugo Swart. I lead Qualcomm's uh, XR business. And uh, welcome to one more episode of Exploring the Metaverse uh, series. Today, we have a very special guest, Mark Pettit. He is a VP of uh, Unreal Engine Ecosystem. And uh, Mark, thanks for joining us here. You talk a lot about the open metaverse. So maybe that's something I think uh, the audience might be interested to understand your perspective about what you mean about the open metaverse. Why do we need the open metaverse? Yeah, so uh, as you alluded to, I think there's multiple definition of the metaverse, but you know, I think we all agree that's the next evolution of the internet. It's powered by a new form of media, which is real-time 3D. Real-time 3D is, can be multi-user, can be interactive. And so we have ahead of us the promise of a world uh, of participatory experiences. So I think the contrast is with, you know, the 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 internet 2.0, which was born out of the commoditization of digital video, has become... Uh, you know, a handful of wall gardens. And I think uh, the open metaverse will be to reaction to that and say, hey, we have another major disruption, you know, switching from, we still have, we still have digital video, but we'll see more interactive 3D, more multi-user experience, more inter interactivity, more immersivity in spatial computing. Right. Maybe it's the time to redefine the platforms and the rules of engagement on data collection, on privacy, on safety, on ethics. And create, and I think you know when you hear about the open metaverse, it's kind of that you know that idea that uh, you know we want a new generation of platform. I think it's it's fair to say that uh, we do. And the podcast uh, building the open metaverse that uh, I co-host with Patrick Cozzi from CCM, we're focusing. I was on the plumbing, and I said, you know, in in order to achieve this open metaverse and have a new generation of uh, business models and engagement models. We need basic interoperability and it's going to be hard. So we see also open as being, you know, like the promotion of open standards and making sure that uh, the existing standards like USD and GLTF like kind of converge and we don't start day zero of the metaverse with diverging path when it comes to uh, interoperability. So uh, a lot of work. Remember, there was a government mandate for, for the internet to be open. Uh, there is no mandate for the metaverse. We're going to have to take charge ourselves. Of course, I think most of the audience know, you know, who Epic is and, you know, big assets like Fortnite and uh, Unreal Engine. But maybe can you talk more specific about Epic's role in uh, building the open metaverse? You think it is uh, Fortnite is going to be the way to expand and create the metaverse? Is it about the tools? Is it about working with developers? How is it? I think it's about... Uh you know, fundamentally is the enablement of creators and of a new creator economy through our tools and our platform. Of course, through our tools, it's all the effort we do around the Unreal Engine. As you know, we have a specific economic model around the Unreal Engine, the tools, we don't charge for the tools themselves, we just charge a royalty on, on the resulting consumer products. And, but we've done a lot of investment. And if you see, you know, uh, like Quickstall, the ability to create virtual worlds very easily. MetaHuman, the ability to create uh, believable digital human also for free. I mean, and you know, with the browser on the internet for free, I mean, it doesn't get more accessible than that. And uh, the UE5 itself is its capacity to generate uh, photorealistic renderings in real time. I think we're we're on a mission to try to reduce the cost of a, a content creation. We need to enable the creators to to do them at, at a cost, you know, that's acceptable. And so, all of the work you see on Unreal Engine and all of the adjacent technology I mentioned, uh, Quicksilver, MetaHuman, and and Night and Lumen, and all those things, it's about reducing the cost of creating content. And then there is the platform aspect. We think, uh, you know, those platforms should allow people to to reach out to audiences across all platforms. We did this with crossplay, cross gaming, with Fortnite, and with Fortnite Creative, we're building a social entertainment platform where you can create one screen on Real Engine and publish to all all platforms, helping people create content, helping people distribute this content, gathering an, an audience for them. I think is what Epic is trying to do, and. We want to be the most entertaining destination in the metaverse. That's great. Not only Qualcomm, but everyone in the industry benefit for, uh, from this uh, more open and what you guys are, are doing on the content uh, creation and, and developer support. 
Now, you mentioned the MetaHuman um, program or uh, product that you have. When do you expect that we get into a metaverse scenario or virtual worlds? Right now, I think with MetaHuman, we've cracked. I mean, let's, let's be fair. I think we've cracked the creation of a photorealistic avatars. Yeah. What we don't have is the ability to, you know, for you to create your avatar and use it on across multiple platforms. So we have a lot of ways. Uh, first, we have to have platform that brings a visual fidelity that, you know, supports, you know, the crossing that uncanny valley. And then we need to have portability of those, you know, an agreement on the standard for avatars to move across platforms. And so that your, your likeness can, can follow you on any platform that you uh, that you go to. So that is that is going to be a fair amount of time, I believe, to to bring yeah. that to all of standardization. You know? But the human is interesting because it's it's the combination of, uh, of three things that are actually important for content creation in the metaverse. First, it's based on, at the root of it is scanning technology. So you have to scan yourself and, uh, you know, you can do it with one camera, with multiple camera. And then we use, you know, the tool is based on the usage of game mechanics. You have simulation in real time so that you know that what you're doing actually looks right. And then we have the use of AI. You know, the fact that the, the person, AI, think of it as a ring fence around the uncanny valley, prevents you from creating a character or creating an animation that is in the uncanny valley. Yeah. And so the combination of scanning technology, game mechanics, and AI is really how we we, we plan to make high-end content creation available to everybody. Oh, that's that's cool. And I, and I think on, on our part, on the Qualcomm side, I think how we want to help um, this vision come through is with the processors and connectivity empowering devices that uh, can um, show the visual and audio immersive experiences that we all want. And we understand yeah. that it's hard to do it with only local processing, right? We have to do distributed processing, be it between a headset and a proximate host that has um, high um, compute uh, capability, or between you know the, the, the headset the um, you know proximate host and the cloud or directly to the cloud, and I think yeah. that uh, having the processing, the connectivity, uh, and the architecture that once again uh, will benefit from standardization and implementation across uh, networks and 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 um, industries, I think will 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 be on the right uh, trajectory towards that vision. We love working with you guys because. You know, putting so much processing power and, and uh, network bandwidth, not only in the glasses, but in the VR headset, but also in the cars. You know, we have this HMI business where yeah. uh, we work with Qualcomm. And, you know, I think it's it helps it helps me understand, you know, and that connectivity to the edge that you mentioned into the cloud, you know, how every glass panel in our lives could become, you know, uh, a place to, to consume interactive content. Uh, you know, I, I can't wait to have those boxes to put on my windows here. Yeah. To turn them into screens so that we, you know, sometimes I'm in Montreal, so in the winter we we'll wake up in snow. So sometimes I look forward to waking up on the beach. That's right. Uh, because we're going to be streaming some very nice 3D environment to my window. So I think, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of potential. I mean, always think about, you know, computers and phones, but I think, especially with Qualcomm embedded system, you know, there is so much, so much more opportunity to bring this content everywhere into our daily lives. Yeah. And uh, maybe your favorite use case. You know, when you think about the metaverse and um, what it can be, what, what's your? Is it like you said, waking up in a, in a beach, or do you have any other favorite um, um, use cases that are not or are just starting today, but you really would like to experience um, one day? Well, I mean, there are two things. I mean. One, in terms of utility, uh, you know, I think the promise of AR, you know, to augment our daily lives, to do the simple things is, is very enticing. But I think ultimately, uh, you know, when you think about VR headsets, you know, having this sense of co-presence, having the real feeling that you are, when you're talking to someone, you're with someone, because right. my mom is on the other side of the ocean here, and through COVID, you know, FaceTime was not cutting it. Right. 
And so reading body language, reading facial expression, you know, having having that level of technology so that we actually deliver co-presence and we can be doing to, do, doing something together and feeling together even though we're online. And I know it's going to take time, uh, but I think it's for me uh, would be the ultimate value, you know, co-presence and being with people is what we like as humans. So hopefully That's right. uh, we get there. It may take a decade, but we'll get there. I'm pretty confident. That's my my favorite too, and and similar to what you said on the meta human, uh, it's combination of um, AI, combination of um, distributed processing, connectivity. Um, as we evolve, um, uh, you know, over the, the next few years, I think um, that's that's the vision. Yeah, here at Qualcomm, we always like to look at the parallel we saw on um, going from uh, the internet to the mobile internet or from 2G to 3G, uh, where the journey wasn't a one year. Oh, we switched from uh, monochrome phones that can only do calls to these marvels you know, that we have today in our pocket that do everything. It's a combination of um, of um, you know, display improvements, processor improvements, connectivity, content, tools, and you know, over the course of uh, five years, ten years, you see the real transformation. Um, but um, it's it's good to see where we are today. Um, I think uh, for sure, I I know you have uh, visibility to some of the things that many don't. I have it too, and I'm very excited to to see all the the. Uh, progress that our industry is making. Um, you know, very excited to be working with uh, with Epic uh, on this uh, journey, be it on standards, be it on um, ecosystem development. Anything else, um, Mark, that you see um, Qualcomm helping or working together with uh, with you um, to drive the metaverse uh, uh, progress? Well, I mean, we're already doing a lot together. You know, we have this uh, very uh, exten extensive, expensive partnership uh, between Qualcomm and Epic, which we're very, very proud of. And I think it's it's working very well, as, as you mentioned. So, um, I mean, we, we can't, you know, we, we want this next generation of hardware. I mean, that's 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 where we are. We're stomping at the bit. Uh, we, we trust you guys are going to come up with some, some amazing thing. And I think he will bring, you know, Back to my mother, I mean, the utility of the metaverse is not obvious for consumers. And I think uh, we're getting to the point where uh, with the next generation hardware, we can bring a lot of utility to a lot of people. And I think that's, that is that is absolutely very exciting. It's been long in, long in the making <laughs> well, uh, to turn the vision into reality for many people. But I think it's uh, we're in a good place now. Yeah, count on us for, for that. Um, so yeah, Mark, uh, thank you. Thank you again. Uh, appreciate your time. Appreciate uh, you joining us in this uh, Exploring uh, the Metaverse um, uh, episode. Thanks for watching the Exploring the Metaverse show. If you want to watch another video or learn more about XR, click here. If you want to learn more about Snapdragon Spaces, click here.